Good evening, I'm Pastor Brad Smith, and this is Sunday night at 7 o'clock. If all goes well, uh, this is what we call Palm Sunday. What my intention is uh, throughout this week is to every night at 7 o'clock to drop on Facebook Live just a short devotion, uh, thinking about what Christ did for us on that amazing week, the week that he had intentionally determined to go to the cross and to be raised from the dead on that Resurrection Sunday. Uh, so I hope that uh, during this week you'll be able to just take five to ten minutes and, and watch these devotions and go through this scripture and to pray and to seek God's face uh, as we may be doing this a little differently than we would like or that we would normally. Uh, but God can use this time as amazing uh, benefit and blessing and for his glory, obviously, above all else. And that's actually what I want to do tonight. That's the topic of the devotion tonight is God's certain plan of salvation. Since this is Sunday in Passion Week, we'll be looking at John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. And this gives us uh, John's account of what we call the triumphal entry on that Palm Sunday. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to John chapter 12. We'll read through it together now. The Word of God says this. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. And in this we have John's account of the triumphal entry. Uh, again, the theme is going to be that God's plan of salvation is certain and sure, regardless of how people respond to it, and regardless of what is going on in the world, what God has determined will come to pass, will in fact come to pass. And we're thankful that he is a good and gracious God who has ordained from the foundation of the world that he would save a people and redeem them for himself. A few things I want to point out. First of all, let's look at the uh, the Pharisees. See, there are those who are going to be overtly opposed to Christ. And this is not new uh, in that time. That's also true in this time as well. That There are just some who are overtly opposed to Jesus as the Christ. Look at verse 19. It says, so the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you're gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. Clearly, that's hyperbole to prove the point that, that they were mad and embittered, that they were losing influence, that they were losing power, that they were losing esteem within that community and among the people. And because of that, they were opposed to Christ. And we'll see in the upcoming nights that uh, they determined to put him to death, obviously, as was carried out on that Friday. So we see that here, though, first of all, the first of three groups of people, uh, the Pharisees being overtly opposed, clearly not every individual Pharisee, but as a group, that was the general, the general sentiment. We also have uh, another group in verse 17, and this is a crowd who is really just fickle and after that which is novel. These are people that are following Jesus because uh, they were hoping for another sign. Let's read through this again. Verse 17, the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. So they were, they were there because they had heard about or seen directly that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the tomb. But then it says in verse 18, the reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this side. So there's some people who are saying, yes, Jesus raised Lazarus from the tomb. And then you have others who hear them say that. And they're just, again, the fickle crowd out to follow Jesus or to hang around him to see if he's going to do something that they find new, novel, or entertaining. So who knows what they really thought. Maybe there were some among this crowd who would be saved later. 
And the disciples is the third group. The disciples, it says, they're, they're still kind of confused in verse 16. His disciples did not understand these things at first, the, the fulfilled prophecy that we'll talk about in a, in a second. His disciples didn't understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. So even among the disciples who are following Jesus, you see that, that they don't understand completely what's going on. And at the time, they certainly didn't understand the significance of what he was doing during the triumphal entry, uh, entering Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday. This is the week that he's intentionally going to the cross to die for sin, to redeem a people for himself. This is the Sunday of that week. So we have these three groups of people that are overtly opposed, those who are just hanging out with Jesus to see signs maybe, and then the disciples who are devout followers of Christ, but clearly not uh, understanding everything going on. And I would like to point out that even though that was all of the people's response to Jesus on that day, none of those responses, whether hostile, seeking the novel, or confused, none of those responses impacted or thwarted at all God's good and gracious plan to save. Now notice a couple things also, that God graciously had given them many signs, that Jesus is the Christ, that this week is, is going to be a special week in the life of Christ and in humanity for all eternity. Jesus had intentionally decided, uh, Luke tells us, before this point, to head to Jerusalem at this time. He had spoken to his disciples a few times already that he would be uh, handed over, that he would be crucified, killed, and then on the third day he would come back from the dead. He would be resurrected. So he had explained these things. We have the Old Testament prophecy as well. And then verse 15 here in this chapter in this passage in John 12 verse 15 is itself a, a quotation from Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. This is fulfillment of an Old Testament prophecy. So even this action of Jesus entering Jerusalem in this way at this time is a gracious sign by God to pay attention to his son. Now the miracles that Jesus had performed, whether it was healing of the sick or, or casting out of demons, showing his power over health, over nature, over creation, and even over the spiritual realm, were all gracious signs by God to point them to Jesus as the Christ. The miracle of raising Lazarus back from the dead is mentioned right before this passage. It says in verse 9 in John chapter 12, When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And then it says, so the chief priests had made plans to put Lazarus to death as well. Based on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. So Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead was a sign that he is who he said he is. So God had given all of these good and gracious signs to them to point them to Christ, to point them to the specific work that he was about to accomplish. And then still, different people responded in different ways with, again, over hostility or antagonism or apathy or a confusion at the time. And none of those responses impacted uh, God's plan. And again, I'd like to take some time to, to just think about that. And I hope that in your homes, you'll take some time perhaps to discuss what that means. And our confusion, even though we don't fully understand what God is doing, doesn't mean that he's not working and that he's not in control. That's clearly illustrated from this passage. God's being, his attributes, and his plans are true regardless of how people respond or how people recognize or refuse to recognize Jesus as the Christ. God's work and his plan of salvation are not dependent upon our full comprehension of, of every way in which God's working. You see, we're called to follow Christ, to cry out to him as Savior and Lord. We've been talking about sola fide on Sunday mornings the last few months. So we understand that we're sinners in need of a Savior. And we understand that Jesus is that Savior and there is no other. And then the biblical command is to cry out to him in repentance and faith and to worship God and to pray to God and to seek God through Christ, our Savior and Lord. But take some time to discuss those things. Take some time to discuss uh, what, is, what we're going to be discussing during these Passion Week devotionals. But take comfort 
believer, knowing that God is in control, that his will will come to pass, and it's not dependent upon anything within man to make that happen. It's dependent fully upon the will and power of a good and gracious God. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful that we know that you are good and gracious, and we're thankful that we know that you are trustworthy and true and will be faithful to fulfill your promises for your glory and for your people. Lord, in these times of uncertainty, we pray that you would be our certainty. In these times of doubt, that you would be our surety and that you would continue to grant us faith. We pray that you would bless these devotions, bless this time this week, strengthen our faith, turn the hearts of your people toward you, and be pleased with uh, our heart's devotion and attention and motivation. And may we live a life for your glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.